Hi dear, here is Edith, your host from Step Into Your Brilliance. As announced, here is the second part of this in-depth and very exciting interview, asking Dr. Cho how we can attract romantic love that we long for into our lives. Sit back and enjoy. People want abundance, but they don't really want abundance, they want freedom. That's what they really want. They want to be able to do whatever they want. They want to have freedom. Yes. You know, people want a mystical experience. No, they want to be blown away. They want to feel awe. They, they want to be in awe of life. People want to be healed. Uh, no, they, they want to be whole. Mm. They want to feel wholeness. Uh, they want to feel whole again. So if you're looking for the reason uh, why you want certain things, you want it for an emotion. The emotions the, is the payoff from the experience. It it's the payoff. And then we get to experience it with our senses and it's greater than we imagined. And I'm telling you, when, when, when the reality starts organizing itself to reflect your energy and it starts showing up it's in your unbelievable. life. unbelievable. What kind of feeling do you feel when you start seeing those synchronicities? You feel excitement, joy, inspiration. That's the energy you're going to use to create the next one. And so yes. people in our work, you know, this is the thing that I'm a pr proud why of. Because synchronicities happen daily when you're Because in your energy is synchronized. Yeah. Your energy is synchronized to a future. So the future that you're seeing in your mind before it happened and emotionally embracing so much so that your brain and body look like it's already happened. Well, if it looks physically like it's already happened, relax, because it's gonna come to you. Mm. So then people in this work do the work every day, and that's the thing I'm the most proud of, not because I want them to do it out of obligation or to please God or do the right thing or whatever else, whatever the programs have been for, for thousands of years. They don't want the magic to end. Mm -hmm. They just like, I don't know what this is, but I'm having these incredible lucid moments. I'm, I can't believe I just got this opportunity and wow, this is happening. And there, every synchronicity does what? It creates the energy and the belief that there could be more, but they're not trying to control it. They're not trying to predict it. In fact, it's, it's none of their business how it happens or when it happens. That's, if you can predict how it's gonna happen, that's the known. Yeah. The unknown is like, I'm so happy, I would never try to control it. I'm not gonna leave the present moment and that's when you're the vortex, you know, to experiences. And mm. so that's the difference between creating as source or praying as source or creating or praying to source. Separation is begging, ah. trying. Now, you are, you are connected, you feel divine. You feel you are the source. You are connected to source. Yes. And so this place is the bridge to that. Once it's here, then there are, there are, there are emotions and energies and frequencies that are just inevitable. You, you, can't, you can't describe how much love that is or yeah. the feeling that you feel. Do emotions create thoughts or do thoughts create emotions? Both. So think about this. Some people wake up in the morning. Uh -huh. Your brain is a record of the past. Yeah. The first thing they do is they think about their problems. Those <laughs> yeah. problems are memories that are etched in the brain that are connected to certain people certain objects, certain things at a certain time and place. The moment they wake up in the morning and they think about their problems, they're thinking in the past. Mm. If you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, well, you're already in your past. Every one of those problems, since we've experienced it, has an emotion associated with it. So then all of a sudden, they start feeling unhappy. The moment they feel unhappy, now the body's in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. Huh. So now that once they go, oh. Say that one more time. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the body. Mm. So the moment they start feeling those feelings, now their body's in the past. So now they, they get back and they, they started off with a clean slate. And they didn't feel anything. And then they're like, I'm back to feeling unhappy. Okay, I'm back to myself again. Ah. So because they'd rather feel unhappy than feel, not feel anything. So naturally, the void of that emotion is influencing, the body's influencing the mind, the brain to think, so it produces the chemicals for it to feel. Uh -huh. Some people just wake up in the morning and they don't feel anything, and then all of a sudden they just look for that feeling. They just, some people need a thought to do it, some people can just bring up the feeling, right? Wow. So then they cling to that emotion because at least it's the known. Mm -hmm. So some people have emotions that influence thoughts, some people are more analytical. They have thoughts that influence feelings, mm. but it's a loop, right? It's, it's that cycle of thinking and feeling. What's the formula to get out of that quickly? <laughs> Keep mentioning the formula, like there's a formula. If, if that's yeah. happening, and I know we've had 
thousands of people that go through your books and your med uh, uh, audio meditations. I think you have some new ones coming out here soon and they've been to your workshops, which I think go to the workshop because it's going to be a game changer. I can't wait till I can go, but I keep inviting you. Guess I what? Know, you can't happen. come anymore. You're not allowed to come. <laughs> I'm okay. coming. No, you can't come now. So maybe this will get him to come. Exactly. Now I'm there. Uh, what is a formula, like a one to two minute formula when someone notices, oh, I'm feeling something and then my thoughts are uh, supporting that feeling and I'm just staying in this loop. What's the one or two minute formula they could just implement in the morning, at night, whenever yeah. to help them? Well, I'm going to give you two examples, okay, because there's not just one way to do this. Of course. Um, yeah. um, so if you're, if you're truly in the business of change or creating your life, that's a big responsibility, yeah. right? I mean, like we, we, we ran our event. I said to the audience, okay, nobody, nobody forced you to come here, right? You came here on your own. You took the risk in coming here. By coming here, you also agree that you create your reality, mm. that you're responsible for yourself and your life. So if something happens to you, you can't blame anybody because of that. It's your responsibility to take care of you, right? So then the fundamental question is, and I ask myself this all the time, at what point do I stop believing that I create my life? At what point? When things go bad, then all of a sudden it's, I didn't create that. That person is doing it to me, right? So if we can, if we can wire that in our brains, right? That our reaction and response to an environmental condition is causing us to go back to the past. Mm -hmm. That's what the emotion is. The familiar emotion is the past. And I'm on the journey and I catch myself doing that. If I'm truly in the practice every day, and I can cultivate a feeling, not, not, n not on the spot then, that you, you, you're not prepared. Your meditation is the preparation of mind and body for this. So I don't get up from my meditation until I'm in love with life. I don't, mm. I don't create anything that's gonna be unlimited until I feel unlimited. And I'm in that space. And if I'm practicing feeling unlimited every day, I'm practice connecting to the emotions of my future, I'm, I'm out of the bleachers and I'm on the field. Mm. If you're in the bleachers and you're trying to not react to people in, in circumstances, you don't have the practice or the skill set on how to create that emotion because you haven't been practicing creating it. And why do we close our eyes and do it? Because the environment is so seductive. Why do we sit still and not move? Because you're gonna wanna get up and pee and eat and have a cup of coffee <laughs> and feel. So, so now you're telling your body, hey, stay, I'm gonna feed you. Yeah, you're gonna take a shower, you're gonna get coffee, you can play with your cell phone, right. you can text, you can talk trash, you can do anything you want, but right now, you're not the mind. Mm. I'm the mind, and you're gonna sit and stay till I'm done, and when I condition you to the emotions of the future, and I get a very clear image of who I'm no. going to be this day, and I'm not gonna get up until I feel that way, I guarantee you, you're gonna come up against all those unconscious thoughts, they're gonna come up right there. I, I want people to, I want them to see it. I want them to become so familiar with it. So conscious, if they wouldn't go unconscious, they wouldn't let that thought I can't ever slip by their mm. awareness unchecked. They've done the work in the beginning of the day. They suppress those circuits in the brain and nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. You're, you're breaking down the old personality. Ooh. And so you say, ah, oh, your body wants to get up, I gotta pee, I wanna have a couple, I wanna check my, and you, you watch your body wanna get up and you go, hey, 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 get over here. <laughs> you, you get back into this present moment. And wow. you, every time you do that, it's a victory. You're executing a will that's greater than an unconscious program. And most people lose their free will to a program because they do the same thing today as they did yesterday. Their body's on autopilot and it's dragging them into the same future habitually based on what they did in the past. So now you're sitting there and it's just a little uncomfortable and you want to quit and your body, and you go, no. And you get over here and you bring it back. Now some people say, I can't meditate, but really they're actually doing it right. That's a victory too. Yeah. And then you do that and you start watching how you're training your body back into the present moment. Then it's your body says, well, you know, Lewis, it's, uh, 
<laughs> this is, it's 8, 8.30 in the morning. This is usually when you watch the news and throw a tirade and get angry. Right. And I'm React. Was, and you're what's sitting here with your eyes closed and you're off schedule. So why don't we just get agitated about anything? So the body starts trying to create images in your mind. So you remember your ex, you remember your problems. So you could feel that agitation. What if you watched your body do that and you said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give my power away to the past or that person or that circumstance in my life. You get that body back in the present moment. You lower the volume to that emotion. Whew, that's a victory. You're telling the body it's no longer the mind that you're the mind. Now, that kind of work is tedious in the beginning, but I watch people because when I have them do that, it starts stretching their boundaries. Mm -hmm. The known self, that little box, starts to move into the unknown and they survive. And all of a sudden they're more relaxed in the present moment, the unknown. And they start feeling more satisfied. So now they're more ready to create. So the preparation for the day mm. is to remind yourself of who you no longer want to be. Ah. To know thyself. To become so familiar with. The word meditation means to become familiar with. So conscious of your unconscious programs, you're not going to go unconscious. Why? Because you did, you did battle today with that personality that's creating the same personal reality. And if your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you mm. feel, and you want to create a new personal reality, then you got to change your personality. And that's going to mean then you're going to become so conscious of those unconscious programs that you're no longer the program. You're the consciousness observing the program. Disentangling from that is not easy. That's why most people won't do it. That's why they get on their cell phone and say, let me just create a little dopamine by just seeing if I got a text from somebody I like. You, then mm. your phone's over there and you're no longer regulating with something outside of you. This is, this is game time. So then if you said, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? Hmm? With my attention and my intention, I'm going to make that the loudest voice in my head. Mm. And if you keep firing and wiring, that hardware is going to become a software program and it's going to be a new voice. Right. It's going to, you installed it. No, no magic there. And if you <laughs> said, hey, listen, I sucked yesterday with my staff meeting. I was off. I want another shot at it. How would greatness show up? Uh, School of greatness. Yeah. How would greatness show up for the staff meeting? I got another shot. I got 10 fingers, 10 toes. I'm alive. My heart's beating. I didn't fail. I got another shot today. All right. What, what do I know about myself that I can do? The act of closing your eyes and rehearsing who you're going to be God, so is installing more hardware. The brain's going to look like you already did it. Now it's no longer in the past. It's primed for the future. Keep doing it, and it's going to become a software program, and you're going to start looking pretty great. People are going to go like, wow. Feeling great. You're going to, you're going to demonstrate greatness. Yeah. Well, but there's no magic there, because you're going to think, what is greatness? OK, I like what this person said. I like what that person said. I like what I read here. I love my experience of when I've demonstrated. And the frontal lobe is going to create a beautiful, beautiful understanding of what, how to evolve your experience. And when you, no different than learning how to dance, learning a sport, learning a lines if you're an actor or an actress, a, a musician, you, you rehearse all the time. And the rehearsal is actually priming the brain for the experience. So now your brain is ready for the day. It's different than just going, oh, I'm not going to react to my boss. Well, well, you haven't done the work to come up with how to, how to overcome that and then what did you install so you have circuit, you have raw materials to, to use. Now here's yeah. the hardest part. Can you teach your body emotionally what it would feel like if you, if you arrived at your future? And, and can you say, I'm not going to get up until I feel that way? Now this is, mm. this is good work here. Because you'll have to come up with that emotion and get beyond the shame, the guilt, the unworthiness, the pain, the suffering. And this is battle. This is battle because your brain is going to keep going to something that's going to want to make you feel that way. Then the analytical mind is going to say, you can't do this, it's too hard, why don't you quit? And that's where everybody stops. But right on the other side of that is love. Mm. Right on the other side of that is gratitude. Right on the other side of that is freedom, right? So then if the person's willing to go a little further and practice a way to do that, and they could get in touch with that emotion, and they can feel it. And when I feel it, I always say, and usually when it's really good, I say, remember this feeling. Memorize this feeling. Memorize it. I want to... Make a I, snapshot of that feeling. I want to I want to know, I want to be able to bring this feeling up on command. So I'll let it go. Mm. And then I'll go back and say, let me see if I can do it again. Why am I trying to do it again? To remember. Remembering is creating the circuitry to be able to produce it again. It's going to become a skill. Now, I have something to walk into my condition in my life where I'm reacting. And now I have a plan. 
I've primed my brain and body to the future instead of the past. I've suppressed the past. Yeah. So now I have, I'm, I'm closing my eyes, disconnecting from the environment, overcoming my body, not thinking about the predictable future, the familiar past and time. I'm in the present moment. I'm ready to create. Why? Because I want to present myself to the world as an evolved version of yesterday. Real quick, before you go to the next, I hear a lot of therapists will mention we should not suppress emotions. I'm hearing you mention just there suppressing the past. No, I would never say suppress. I would say, at what point are you done feeling that emotion? Gotcha. You want to so keep feeling feel it? Go, if, if you're not doing off. anything wrong, you're just yeah, taking yeah. too long. I mean, gotcha, like, gotcha. I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to not feel emotion. I feel emotions, but again, I'm just going to move through them. I'm a super passionate person. And if I'm yeah. going in, I'm going all in. I'm not going half halfway. But when I feel and I can catch myself, that's pretty cool. Gotcha. Because yes. now I can change it. No one, no one, nothing is doing that to me. I'll feel it. I'm not sitting there going, I'm not doing that. I'm not, there's no tool set there. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm steeping in the emotion. That's not it. I am saying, okay, I'm angry. In, the, in this moment in eternity, Joe Dispenza, what do you got? What do you got? This is the moment you're gonna remember because mm -hmm. people who heal, people who have transcendental moments, people who break through, people who have the, the wealth, the freedom, when they look back at their life and they see all the days they chose themselves to show up for their meditation, mm. when they look back at those past moments, they're not looking back at the easy meditations. Mm -hmm. They're not falling in love with the person who had the good med, they're, they're falling in love with the person who sat in the fire. They're, they're, they remember those moments where they were like, I didn't give up on me. I believed in myself. I believed there was something on the other side of this feeling. I stuck with it. And all of a sudden it starts to change. And for some people it takes a little longer than others, but they're on it. Mm -hmm. And so then when they look back at their past and they see all those times that it was hard, and they, they went a little further, they're gonna fall in love with that yeah. person. And now their future self, who's already transformed, is drawing their past self to them in love. There's, that's how, that's how reality so is. So our, our future self in the future or No, there, in the there's moment. a future you right. that's already exists. You just gotta get there. Right. And he's, he's in love with you. And the mm. only way you're gonna get there is by you being in love with you. And being in love in the past. Yeah, but so then what is love then? So then huh. people think they confuse love with pleasure. Yes. Like a manicure or shopping spree, that's not love, that's pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, and the more whole we are, the less need for pleasure we have. You sit in the fire. I watched 1,025 people last week transform themselves. Mm. In the beginning, I was trying to find the door. I, they were, they were, I was bouncing off them, I just wouldn't quit. And then they started doing the work. They came up against themselves, they got frustrated, they got impatient, I kept reminding them, their brain's going into high beta, their arousal is driving them further out of balance, and they started tempering the animal. And they started, I took them a little further and they sat through the fire, and all of a sudden it wasn't about the mystical experience, it wasn't about the wealth, it was about learning the formula. It wasn't about what they wanted. It was about overcoming themselves, they're learning the formula on how in that moment, if they could just relax and keep practicing, that little box begins to expand and mm. now there's more, more, more room for them to relax in the unknown. I stretched them outside of the known and they survived. Yeah. And I keep stretching them and all of a sudden they're more present. And so they wanted, they wanted to come to the edge in the next meditation and go a little further. It was no longer me saying you gotta go. They were, they wanted the edge. They wanted to see what was standing in the way between them and their new relationship. Mm -hmm. them and their healing. What, what was that thing that I want to remove? I'm going to, if not now, when, right? So they wanted to take it on because they, they forgot about their cell phones. We did it during the week of election, so nobody would care about us. They, they didn't <laughs> care about the election. They didn't care about wow. any disease. They were immersed and, and they retreated from their lives. Now, back to your question. I guarantee you those people when they face circumstances in their life now, they're ready for their environment. Mm. In fact, they've lowered the volume to so many of those emotions. When people slash out at them or do things, they're gonna go, oh, come here. Are you hurting? Get over here, right, we'll right. give you a hug. Not like, oh, you know, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna be like, come here, I love you. Get over here, yeah. are you okay? It's just, they're not, there's not that anymore. They, they, they kinda, they, they're kinda ready. So, mm. so the formula then, to answer your question, <laughs> is brain and heart coherence. 
And when you're in stress and you're in survival, when you're in danger, the arousal of the stress hormones creates a heighten, heightening of our senses and we become materialists and we narrow our focus on the material world and that's reality now. And mm. when we start trying to control reality and predict it and we have the perception that things are getting worse, all of a sudden we're shifting our attention to one person, to another person, to another problem, to another thing, to another text. And every one of those things, there's a neurological network in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones causes the brain to start firing incoherently. And now there's no energy in the brain because the incoherence is diminishing energy. It's waves that are canceling each other out. The brain goes into like this quiescence of no activity, but very little, very little performance. So then we said, okay, let's teach people how to take their attention off of everything known in this memory bank of the known self, the autobiographical self, the artifact of the past. Mm. Let's teach them how to go from a narrow object focus on anything material that's known in this three-dimensional reality to broadening their focus, mm. to putting their attention on energy, nothing, space, and going from a convergent focus to a divergent focus and opening their focus, we started noticing that the brain started to synchronize. The different compartments started to unify and the brain started functioning in a more holistic state and the person started feeling more chilled more poised, more clear. And what sinks in the brain, mm. links in the brain. Mm. So you start seeing this kind of integration. And we can call people on the stage now, and I can say, would you show the audience on a brain scan how to go in the gamma? Give me one second. Boom, they go right in the gamma. Wow. Can you show them how to go in the alpha coherent brainwave patterns? I can, give me a minute. It's alpha, uh like negative now, state or? Alpha is like that creative state. Oh, when, creative when, state. The, when the brain starts slowing down analytical you know, ah, processing. Okay. So gamma then, is what? It's like super consciousness. That's like, that's the, like the, that's the big stuff. Yeah, that's, that's like. the highest level that your brain can go into. Yeah, it's a kind of a very fast frequency, but our gamma frequencies that we record in our work is so coherent. Like, let me see how I could say this. When you're in beta, right? We're in beta right now. Mm -hmm your brain is busy integrating all this information. What I'm saying, what you're feeling, the temperature in the room, the lights, your back, you know, everything else, your brain's gotta figure all this out. It's gotta create meaning between what's going on out there and what's going on in here. If I said to you, Lewis, I forgot to tell you you're gonna take a test today, you would perk up a little bit more, right? The light bulb will get a little brighter, yeah. it's mid-range beta. But when you're in high beta, that's when you're really, really out of balance. When you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, when you're vigilant, you know, that's, the brain is in a very, very high, heightened state. And that's that high beta. High beta, that's. It's when you're in a negative state. Yeah, exactly, you're in survival. And people don't think they can control that. So they start analyzing in that state and they make their brain worse. They get overly focused, overly analytical. And now mm. you gotta get beyond that analytical mind to get into the operating system to change those unwanted habits and behaviors. So when you disconnect from your environment and you close your eyes and there's less stimulation coming mm. in, we play music in the background, you're not eating, you're not smelling, you're not tasting, you're not feeling, there's less sensory information. Naturally, this mechanism starts to slow down and so there's less information yeah. and you go into alpha and you cross the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind, so now, you're suppressing the, 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 the analytical mind that's saying you can, it's too hard, the voice goes away. And in alpha now, we're not looking for any kind of alpha, we're looking for coherent alpha. So as they open their focus and they sense space, the act of sensing and feeling mm. causes them to stop thinking and analyzing. So you start seeing energy leave the neocortex, right? If they do it really well and the body starts to fall asleep or it feels so comfortable that it can rest in the present moment and let it almost fall asleep and you're still conscious and awake. Now you're in theta. Mm. Now that's a that's hypnotic your, state. Your body's like vibrating almost. Yeah, the, the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open. It's very programmable, very programmable. What should we be saying or thinking in You're not that doing state? anything. You shouldn't be thinking No, anything. the formula is when you sense, you'll watch, you'll, we do this naturally when we go to bed at night. Yes. But now we're just taking you down the steps so you know the terrain, how to get there. In theta, when you're in that state, you can reprogram, you can rewrite the program. It's easier because you're out of this, this thinking brain. So we shouldn't be thinking to reprogram or just You won't be thinking, you'll itself. be rehearsing. 
rehearse you'll see yourself doing something what should we rehearse whatever you want what do you want you want you want to be an excellent be handball player correct. you yeah. want to be the top yeah, yeah. you got to rehearse so you visualize what you want to create yeah, you you imagine but but you it's better to do it when your body is very relaxed or better yet you forgot about your body that's a better way to say Ooh. it yeah so then when that theta happens People are usually sitting like this, looking at the television, just before they go to bed at night, they're half awake and they're half asleep, and they're telling them you need a flu shot, they're telling uh, you, you, know, you, have to, you need this drug, you have this problem. Eat this food, yeah. It's going in, the analytical facilities are in the back seat. They're, you're, they're getting programmed to make that choice. They're, they're getting programmed in some way. So they're suggestible <laughs> to information. So now, you could be suggestible to your own auto suggestions or information that you would want to rewrite as a program. So if you said in alpha or theta, <clears throat> I'm just not happy with how I did with my kids today. I, 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 gotta, I need another shot at it. And, and you're relaxed and you're present and you start reviewing how you're gonna be with them. I guarantee you, you start installing hardware there. Right. You start rewriting the program and you're so present that you can go through it. Then you go through it the next time, it's a little easier. You go through it the next time, it's a little easier. You go through it the next time, your mind starts to wander, you, ah, you catch yourself, you come back, right. you do it again. Well, what are you doing? You're, you're rewriting the program and installing it, firing and wiring, right? So mm. you can't do that in beta because you're too distracted, right? It's the daily practice of mental rehearsal in that state which allows you to manifest and attract the two. Exactly, Ex exactly. So whether that's a relationship, whether that's the career you want, the how about, how about the art of life? Yeah. I mean, relationships, job, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, Money, like whatever. people always go to the things that are easy. Like in our work, we pick for the ones that you don't want to look at. We're going to go for that first because we take care of that, the rest gets easy, right? So, so then when there's an integration and people are in theta and they know how to regulate, then something crazy happens. So then when that door opens and their eyes are closed and they're not getting information from the environment, not from the TV, and you teach them how to tune into frequency and energy, and frequency carries information and they're in theta, and the brain starts to process in latent systems that energy and that frequency mm. and transduces it into a mystical profound experience in imagery, the arousal that takes place in the brain is gamma. They're having a very full-on sensory experience, but not with their senses. In other words, whatever's in going on, yeah. it's more real than you and I sitting here, right. right? So imagine if your senses were heightened right now by 50%. Everything you're seeing, hearing, smelling, t your awareness of the environment would be heightened, right? Awareness is consciousness. Yeah. So now we see these coherent alpha patterns lead to these coherent theta patterns and these waves are so orderly that that wave of theta is a carrier wave and then here comes gamma that energy just bursts up into the brain from the body the gates open up and the arousal is not fear the arousal is not pain the arousal is not aggression and anger the arousal is ecstasy and but here's the deal this is alpha if we had 100 people in the room and we were doing this, pretty easy to clap like this, right? Mm -hmm. That's coherence. We're rhythm, and that's good. Then if we went in to theta, it would be a lot slower, right? There's very little neocortical activity, so it's easy to create coherence there. But when you go to gamma, it's like this. Now, try to imagine everybody, 100 people doing that. This is how orderly the neurons in your brain are. They're clapping so fast, and they're all in rhythm. So how would you describe that kind of orderliness except bliss? How would you describe wholeness? What, what is it? I don't know, love, what, yeah. whatever that is, that arousal is, that is so out, outside of normal. Mm. It's not a little bit of gamma. It's not a lot of gamma. It's not a lot, a lot of gamma. It's a supernatural amount of gamma. It's way outside of normal. Now that person is touching the divine. That person is touching that unified field. Their consciousness is merging with the consciousness of the unified field. There's no separation. They are connected and the arousal, the interaction with that energy, they're taking something with them. Yeah. And sometimes there's a biological upgrade. There's the eczema, it's gone. There's the Parkinson's, it's gone. There's the blindness, it's gone. There's the deafness, it's gone. There's the stage four cancer, it's gone. It's, a, it's a immediate wow. biological upgrade. Now, the energy now to finish this 
is not in the neocortex. Lights are out here. You're gone. Lewis is gone. There's no longer an identity called Lewis. Mm. The inner world is profoundly real, and the autonomic nervous system, the midbrain, the limbic brain, that's controlling all your automatic functions. When you're in stress, that autonomic nervous system is dysregulated, it's out of balance. Now you're getting so much order, mm. so much rhythm, that autonomic nervous system's touching every single cell in your body, every tissue, every organ, every system, and it's jiggling the cells, and the cells are getting new information coherently. And so you see the person get a biological upgrade. Mm. Now, you can only talk around this. You have to have the experience, but people who have the experience will, will, will have the biggest smile on their face because they'll realize it was always available to them. So the fundamental question is, is it worth it? That's the real question. Because if you're willing to make those changes every day before you start your day and you have mm. this kind of arousal coming from within you, I guarantee you, you won't be looking in your outer environment to find those feelings. You'll be, you'll be looking within you. And so, inside, yeah. and so in, in stress and in survival, most of your attention is out there. When you leave a week-long event, something amazing happens. You're paying more attention in here. You're paying as much attention in here as you are out here. You're not so seduced, right? So then, as you begin to become, you, you know how to get beyond your body, your environment, and time. The formula is, the moment you dissociate from everything known, the moment you dissociate from everything material, the moment you can relax into the present moment and the brain starts to synchronize, is the moment you become mm. pure consciousness and you are in the present moment. You're in the door to the quantum field and the brain gets highly organized. Okay, so now we have a coherent brain and the coherence in the brain starts to resonate with different frequencies in the field and when there's an octave, when there's a harmonic, the brain starts processing information, right? But they're suggestible, not from out there, but from the field, that's frequency. Mm. But the brain has to be coherent to pick up the rhythm, the frequency. Right. If, it, if it's not, if it's, if you're incoherent, you got static. In, in other words, you got no, you got no <laughs> Wi-Fi signal. You're, sure. you're a piece of matter with no field, right? So then, that sends the signal out, coherent brain. And but what's going to draw the experience back? Our heart, right? So then, we practice then every day, cultivating heart, yeah. the emotions uh -huh. and being able to sustain heart coherence. Now you combine those two and we have beautiful, beautiful brain scans and heart scans to show the dance between the mm. two. And now you got this kind of, <laughs> your heart is speaking to you. I don't know how else to say right. it. It's, you're not getting information from the news, which is, you're not getting information from your Facebook. You're not getting information from your cell phone. That information is just equal to what you're willing to believe. But when your heart speaks to you because there's a resonance between the two, it's going to tell you exactly what's right for Lewis. Yeah. And it's not going to be what anybody else tells you. You're going to know. Mm. So that means then when you're in certain situations and something doesn't feel right because your heart is tuned. You know, the brain thinks, but the heart knows. Ooh. And so when you start getting in this compass, when you start navigating here, when you start practicing this and you start feeling, you are going to see the world through another lens. So then, back to your question. If by chance, I'm knocked out of balance, I will know right away, right away, oh, I lost the feeling. So then in the beginning, it may take longer, but as you, get, as you start evolving your experience every day, you wanna get better at being able to, might a great day for me, is that when I am locked in, and no person, no circumstance, no condition in my life is moving from the, me from the emotions of my future. Ooh. And it could be challenging and hard, and I'm willing to go the distance because the next day, there's always a little magic. Yeah. Like I, I've earned the right for, for the experience now. I've been initiated, and I overcame some of those things, and I will see them as having less control over me. So that means then, when the synchronicities happen, when the serendipities happen, when the opportunities show up, I'm no longer believing that I'm the victim of my life. All of a sudden, I become more aware that I'm the creator of my life, mm -hmm. right? And so then, I respond less to the environmental circumstances, and if I respond less, then the environment no longer weakens me. And if I'm no longer Ooh. weakened by my environment, then I would be immune Ooh. to my environment. And you could create a lot better 
from a place of a powerful immune system, a powerful environment, a powerful thoughts, you can create from that space better than a weakened environment. Exactly. But here's the weird thing. The weird thing is that people are no longer creating material things. This is weird. They don't want, <laughs> you think that you want them, right? But when you start doing this work and you start- You don't need work, it. You're just happy. Imagine being so happy with you mm -hmm. that you don't want to be anybody else. And you don't need anything to make you feel better. Be you don't need anything else. You're just really cool with everything, right? I mean, that's a good place to be. And when yeah. you no longer want, you're no longer trying to control your life or predict it. Wow, the game changes a little bit. You know what's interesting? I live in this, you know, kind of really fancy condo building nearby here. And uh, I got it because it's really convenient. It's close to this office space. Uh, it's got great views of the mountains, the golf course, all this stuff but I'm probably the least fancy person in this building. I mean, it's every type of exclusive car you can think of. And every day, I, I literally smile getting up and going out of the building because I have a $200 scooter that I take to work, that I scoot past these Ferraris and Lamborghinis and McLarens, whatever these cars are, I'm scooting past all these owners of these cars and I'm smiling. Of course, I'm so you're happy. free, you're I'm free. I'm just like scooting, it's not even electric, it's a push scooter. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just happy with this moment. I don't need, right. not that it's, you know, if you want to have cool cars and fancy do stuff. Do that for a while. Yeah. Off, do it for a while until you outgrow it, yeah. It's fun too, and it's like nothing against it. And I want to have nice things, but I don't need it to feel happy. Right, so that's a, that's a really important thing because people build an identity mm. by, you know, becoming some type of body, having some type of body, knowing someone, or being someone, owning some things, living somewhere at some time. And the identity then is identifying with everything material in the three-dimensional world and all their attention is out there, but you wanna hide the divine anywhere in a human being, the best place to hide it is within them. They'll look everywhere else for it. Wow. So then when you start moving closer towards it and you start feeling more whole, then the scooter is, just a, a, a signature of what you love about life, your yeah, freedom. So fun. the the Porsche and you know all those things become an identity, and and when you become possessed by your possessions Ooh. and you can't get beyond them to create because your identity is so steeped in the three dimensional world, it's going to take crisis, it's going to take trauma, it's going to take disease, it's going to take diagnosis, it's going to take break love. through from that, right? No, it's going to get out for of a person to finally go. What's what's more? Up. Yeah, what's more? What's more important, right? So right. when you feel so off, you feel so altered that no sports car, no shopping spree, no meal is going to make the feeling go away. Now this is when the soul's going, hey, wake up, because now nothing out there is going to make this feeling go away. What are you left with? For the first time, you're no longer responding to your texts. Right. You're no longer checking all your uh, emails. You're no longer posting. You're no longer going out to dinner with the same people, listening to the same stories. You're like, you're breaking all those agreements. Right. And now you're looking at yourself because you feel so altered that you can finally see yourself like someone else sees you, you're, you're observing. Now, that's when you begin to objectify the subjective self. That's when, that's the moment you're disentangling from the program. My message is, why would you wait for that? Why not marry a clear intention with an elevated emotion every day, instead of going to your lowest denominator to see yourself, go to an elevated state, yes. and from an elevated state, look at the old self and be so conscious like, okay, now I'm up here. So, you practice the meditation as a rehearsal for game time. And right. then you open your eyes and now it's game time. It's not like I did my meditation, you're on the freeway and you're you know, flipping people <laughs> off or judging your coworker. Now you gotta you, show up. You gotta show up and you gotta demonstrate it. Now you, you primed your brain and body to demonstrate it. Now the game changes. Yes. Now, now it's instrumental, right? So then when you, when you have that kind of understanding and you, you can get in touch with what that is, you'll know the moment you lose it, yes. that it's not, something is not right. So from an elevated state now, you could look at the old self and the moment you start going down, you're like, I lost it. But you're not, you don't have to reach that low place. Why not do it every day so that when you start noticing your energy dropping, you'll get better at it. And this yeah. is not positive thinking. This is creation. Because if you can maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day, Get ready, because weird stuff's yeah. gonna happen all around. You're gonna be like, and this happens all the time. People say, I'm not doing anything. Oh my God, of course you're not. You don't have to do anything. You are the vortex. You're allowing. You're, it's coming to you. Yes. You're coming, it's coming to you. So, so then when that person overcomes themselves and they're sitting in the fire 
it's not no longer pleasure. It's no longer you know the need for what gratification. They're just in love with themselves. They're satisfied yes. with themselves. Now, when they're in love with themselves and they can allow others to be however they want, then the side effect of that is called joy. Joy yeah. is the absence of the torment of those emotions Ooh. that keeps the body unhappy. So allowing others to be what? Reactive or angry or happy? You're just, you're, you're just, you've over, you're just not that anymore. You're yes. happy, right? Yes. So a scooter would bring you just mu as much joy as a, as a sports car because yeah. you don't need either one of them to be happy. It's just, you want the experience of just being free and driving your little, Vespa, whatever it yeah. is, right? The, to me, I'm the same way. Like, I'm not. I, I've had all those things, and none of that means anything to me. I'm. I'm about. We take memories with us. Mm. You know, I want to experiences. I, experiences. I want to have yes. moments that I'll never forget in my entire life. And I don't care if it's the most amazing meal with great friends and great wine and great toasting and great moments and a lot of gratitude, or it's a mystical moment that's so profound and so transformative. Those are the ones that you take with you. Yeah. And so overcoming the past and the emotions that are connected to the past and lowering the volume to those emotions is called wisdom. Mm. Now wisdom is what we take with us and that's when we're done. And now we're ready for the next experience. So, so then that, that teaching people how to find that place of love for themselves means that they have to come up against everything that stands in the way between Ooh. them and that. And, and that's what the work. What is that usually for people? It's, it's the survival emotions, it's hardwired programs, it's their past, it's the story that they tell about their past. I just want them to tell the story of their future more right. than they're telling the story of their past. How much is healing the inner child, how important is that? Is that everything in terms of healing the past memories that are stored in the body and the brain? I'm not certain that we need to heal an inner child in as much as we need to overcome an emotion. Like, mm. I never tell a person to go back to their childhood and remember the events. The, 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 the story is probably not even accurate. Right. Just overcome the emotion. Forget the story. Overcome the emotion and you belong to the future instead of the past, right? So, so will that heal the inner child? Yes. Have I had profound moments where I saw things as a child and how I framed them? Absolutely. But that was a moment where I was, I was enlightened that I didn't need to do that anymore, but it was inwardly that I did that. So healing the inner child is healing the same person. You're right. only the child when you feel the emotion. That's taking in you the back. Moment. In the moment, you're going back to being seven and trying to figure out why your things are happening the way they are. That's never gonna be resolved, but if you don't have the emotion, the child is healed. The child is free, right? I mean, so we just work on the emotions. That's, yes. that's the key. And so when you, when you overcome the emotion that's charged, that keeps you connected to the past, and you no longer have an emotion connected to the past, then that's wisdom. Then you know. I mean, then you're free. Freedom. What's the opposite of love? Because you're mentioning the opposite of love is not fear, it's not anger. There what? is no opposite. The love is love is wholeness. I mean, it's the union of polarity. It's the union of duality. It's opposites coming together. That it's the center of the magnet. Yeah. There's no, there's no polarity in love. There is no opposite. There, we are. We came from pure love. Mm -hmm. We came that. We came yeah. from unity, source, singularity, zero point, universal mind, whatever you call it. Yes. We 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 descended into density from oneness. To answer the question, is there more? There is more. And you are, you have you went. We came. There's how do we say this? There's there's one God, but in that God there are many. So all of us have a spark of oneness, of the divine in us, and we've come down to such a degree of separation that we no longer are connected right. to anyone or anything that you have the free will now. You are so autonomous that the spark of the divine is in you as oneness that you get to create reality on your want to answer the question, is there more? And you get thousands of opportunities to do it. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Kai and I grew up in a specific religion called Christian Science, which I've told you about before. And my dad, I don't know if your, your parents did this, Kai, but my dad, whenever there was a commercial on a TV, you mentioned this, when we're going to sleep, we see commercials that are feeding us medicine or foods or whatever, things we need or whatever. He would always turn the commercials off when there was a medicine because he didn't want us to program our yeah, minds of course. 
from watching this, oh, when you get sick, you need this. You need this to feel better. Something outside of you to change your internal state. Yeah, he would always change that off and say, no, we're gonna have one mind and focus on a capital one mind mm -hmm. uh, and get to the place of truth of knowing who we are. And it's interesting that with social media today, especially with the lockdown for so many people, we're just programming our minds to be in reaction to something we need when we feel like we're lacking it. And it makes us, I feel like- So you can choose. So yeah. you can choose to become dependent on, more of dependent on that. Exactly. And so imagine, if you're not, if you've overcome your emotions, really every day, I guarantee you that you'll pay less attention to that. They only capture your attention with an emotion. They'll tell you, you know, Lewis, as you age, your immune system's getting weaker and weaker mm -hmm. and weaker. And then you see a picture of some guy in his 50s and he looks really good and you don't, he looks better than you. And you're like, oh, oh God, he looks really good. And John here, you know, has had something that you could get if you had chicken pox. Uh-oh, I had chicken pox. One out of three people get this. Uh-oh, mm. I'm not, not such a lucky guy. And then they show you a picture of somebody with shingles and it looks like a fourth degree burn. The whole entire, what are you gonna do? The, the effect of that image is gonna capture your attention because it shocked you. Now you're gonna lean in and pay more attention to it. Now they got you. And anything they say after that is gonna start the programming process. Mm. So you capture people's attention with their emotions. Remember that. And if you want to divide a community, choose fear or choose anger, and you'll polarize everybody. Really? Of course. And then you can then you can decide what the solution is because now people will be susceptible to information. They'll believe whatever it is equal to that emotion. You captivate based on fear or anger? Can you captivate on love? Yeah, of course, but that's not the program. Right. <laughs> and that's the truth. Nobody wants to hear the truth. They want to hear something that's really going to rock them emotionally. Mm. And you're going, to, you're going to give a lot of your attention to that. And that's where the danger comes in. I have pages of questions that I didn't get to around money, mindset, and other things that I want to go into. But I want to save it for another time. So if you want to hear on topics around money mindset, rich mindset, how to overcome the poor mindset, and other topics with Dr. Joe Dispenza, then let me know in the comments on social media, post if you're on YouTube, leave a comment below, let us know, and we'll hopefully we can get you back in the next six to 12 months and do another. This two hours flew by for me, so. Was it that long? It's, I think it's almost two hours, but I want, I want to go another hour, but I know you have <laughs> things to do. Uh, when, we are, when we are in the, you're in the flow. Every time we're together, and that's what I love about our conversations. We just Dude, you're a great stuff. interviewer. I mean, I love- I just I ask one question and that's it. And it just <laughs> lets you go. But uh, I just feel like there's so much that we need to be reminded. You know, we, we've done other interviews in the past that I want, we'll link up here uh, in the show notes and I want people to go watch. There's things that we all need to be reminded that you need to be reminded every morning when you wake up, hey, I need to be better. Well, what, be is, better. what is it? What is it? Well, so what is mind? Mind is the brain in action. That's mm -hmm. what it is, according to neuroscience. So then, it's important for us to remind ourselves, reproduce the same level of mind every day, fire and wire the circuits, install them, and then emotionally embrace the future so the body's conditioned more to the future instead of the past. That's reminding the brain mm. and body, right? And what happens if we don't remind ourselves of that future that we want to create every and, day? Hey, listen, if, if you're not waking up being defined by a vision of the future, I can guarantee you, you'll be predictable because you'll be in the memories of your past, Ooh. period. It's the way it is. And, and I just, Gosh. I want people to believe in their future more than they believe in their past. I want them to be more in love with their future than they are with their past. I want them to romance a new future mm. more than they romance their past. And it's so much easier to forget our vision than to remember it. And that's why we have to remind ourselves every day. It's easier to forget it than to remember it. Of course, in the beginning, there's no circuitry there. So that's why it's a daily practice. Schedule it in, make it the first thing you do, the last thing you do at night, think about it. Do you know how many people stop me and say, you're not gonna believe this. I actually took two weeks just to see if this worked. I can't tell you in two weeks all the crazy things that happened to me. Like, like they have to convince me. Like I'm not interested in convincing anybody any longer that this, is, this works. I'm, I'm, I'm just never, I want you to just learn how to do it yeah. so that it's like you, you eat something really great at a dinner table, the first thing you wanna do is share it with somebody. Yeah. Like, it tastes my, yeah, like yeah. that's how I am. Like, I'm gonna stick it in your mouth, right? That's, <laughs> it's great. So you have that experience, you want other people to experience it. Why? Because 
Imagine a community of people, yeah. the living organism of human beings caring for one another, loving one another, informing one another, honoring one another, respecting one another, healing one another, shining for one another, just so others can shine. I mean, that's, that's who we are when we're not living in yeah. fear and anger and in survival. That's mm -hmm. that we are innately wired to care for one another, to, to respect one another, to, to, be an, to, to be a collective, a new consciousness, a, 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 another way. And, yeah. and, and if you practice it, just feeling a little love every day, a little gratitude, a little gratitude every day, mm. I can prove to you, I have the research, your immune system is going to be so strong, it's going to be immune to any foreign agent. With gratitude. Just 10 minutes, 20 minutes of gratitude a day. Well, yeah. What do you got? Not, not just to think about the things that you're grateful for, but to embrace them emotionally. Mm. Why? Because you want to practice feeling that. What's the, what's the emotional signature of gratitude? When you're receiving something favorable, you just received something favorable. Something amazing is happening to you or something amazing just happened to you that surprised you. What do you say? You feel grateful, right? Mm -hmm. So the emotional signature of gratitude means something amazing just happened to you. You've just, something just happened, or something is literally happening to you. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. Yeah. So if you finish your meditation in gratitude before the event occurs, your body as the unconscious mind is believing it's already happened to it's you. Receiving, and you're yes. in the state of receiving. So, mm. and what do you got to lose except your immune system? The worst thing that could happen to you is you'll heal. It's the worst yeah. thing that could happen to you. Yes. So, if you don't practice it though, you practice watching the news and getting angry and frustrated, you're practicing that. And then the information that you're receiving is equal to your emotional state. And I'm just questioning information now more than ever. I wouldn't yes. trust it anymore. I trust my heart. Okay, we are at the end now. In case you haven't seen part one, I will leave you the link to it in the info box below the video. I'm happy if you share this video, leave a comment so we can get into the conversation. If you like the video or subscribe to my channel. I want you to step into your brilliance and keep shining. See you tomorrow. Bye.